one of Wet Wet Wet's contemporaries who have managed to avoid paying this price are soulful hitmakers Texas. Texas, curiously enough, you could almost frame them into any of the kind of decades, 80s, 90s, uh, and now, and that maybe points to one of their greatest uh, ever achievements, longevity. I mean, Texas are the great survivors. I think you produce records that people want to hear. They've sustained a level of commercial success that is, is unbelievable. Really. Texas grew out of the same scene as Wet 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 and Deacon Blue, getting their first hit with 1989's I Don't Want a Lover. But after this initial high, their fortunes had begun to wane. We were kind of like kicked to the, to, to the curb um, and, and we just knuckled down and went and wrote White on Blonde. Yeah, that's when it went all very big. It's like, we're shifting millions of records. Ian Amman was telling us about they had those kind of like meetings, record company meetings, and they said, the Wet and Blonde was spent still 100,000 records in the first year, no, for the whole campaign, and we sold that in the first day. One of the real kind of challenges of longevity is how you keep returning again and again and again, seeming to be doing something new and original, but at the same time maintaining a deep relationship with your core audience. There will be an end to it at some point, and when that comes, it comes. And I'm really accepting of that. But it just keeps going. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs>